Hello there guys and gals, Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in the excellent Still Wakes the Deep. And no, not the wisdom is deep from Amazon hit show The Boys, it's just the normal deep, like a deep dish pizza. Now this was developed by British devs, The Chinese Room, uh, published by Secret Mode and is usually available for £29.99 slash $34.99 but it's now included with Xbox Game Pass, so got it, get it, good. So we play as Cameron McLeary, or just Kaz to his wee pals there. Yes, the dreadful attempt at Scot Scotland land accents will be throughout this guide, hey <laughs> hey. But we are basically working in an oil rig where an unknown monster Ting decides to board and make our lives hell, as it were. Now, achievements wise, it's a bit of a random array of things. So first we have to make sure not to sprint for more than 10 minutes in the game, then we have to sprint over traversial things, such as ladders and climbables, etc. We also have to make sure at the very beginning of the game to put subtitles mode on to Scottish garlic mode. Then, collectibles-wise, we're looking for 19 bodies, getting 8 phone calls, turning th 4 different things on, get electrocuted 7 different times, drown in 5 different parts of the sea, visit every cabin, die in all 15 possible ways, throw 50 unique objects and talk to everyone in the uh, uh, in the um, intro. So just go ahead and check the timestamps uh, as you're going along. Now, uh, we're going to go straight into settings there. As you can see, we're going to put game mode onto story and just hints onto show. Putting game mode onto story just makes it a hell of a lot easier. Uh, go across there to accessibilities. On the language, again, make sure it is on this particular one. This is the Scottish Garlic mode. Um, and then you can have a little look around to see what else is. You've got, you know, colorblind mode here and everything. So just do what else you want to do. But again, make sure to put it onto Scottish Garlic mode. Uh, that is important for the achievement at the end of the game. Um, head bob and head roll. Again, just to make things a little bit easier, we're going to put it at 0%. And camera shape, we're going to turn off as well. Um, now... The characters do still speak English, so you can still uh, check out the story and everything if you want. But it is just the subtitles that are going to be in the old Gallicness. Uh, so motion blur, film grain, chromatic aberration, we're going to turn all off. And again, just in case of anything, I'm going to put the music volume down to Xeros. And then that should pretty much be about it now, yeah. So... There is a lot, again, in terms of, and again, a lot of it may seem a bit confusing, some of the achievements in terms of what we have to do, but hopefully you just follow along, and it's all golden dandy. But this should take around, you know, between sort of 2 hours and 40-ish, maybe to 3, maybe 3 and a half hours. You can just leave it on here um, as you start the new game, to basically tell us it's another story mode. But it should take around between 3, 3 and a half hours to complete, so... With that being said, Dan, as always, let, 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 let's do it! And straight away, beginning, we can go ahead and just hold the B button. If, you don't, if you're just in this for the achievements and you're not really interested in the story, you can go ahead and hold the B button in order to skip the cutscene. So, hi guys! So, uh, a lot of people... I, I, I've seen a lot of people complain that they wanted this to be more of a survival horror thing. Now, personally... For me, I'm glad they've done it in this kind of... Uh, no, actually, first thing we're going to do here is turn the light on and turn the light off. Now, every time you get a collectible or you do something that is required for an achievement as we go ahead into the next room, you see a save icon in the bottom right-hand corner. So we're going to enter this cabin, and as you can see, there is the save icon, which means that we've entered another cabin. Remember, we have to enter all cabins in the game. So head to the left from that last cabin, go into the one on the right as we get down to the stairs. Again, you'll see the save icon. We're into this next cabin, that means that's been saved. Go down to the right and enter the next cabin here. The old Fosgale. And that is the fourth cabin already done. And then we can go ahead and speak to Broski here, uh, we're all Finley. And we can just go ahead and skip the cutscene. But as I said, now I've... I prefer that they've uh, that the Chinese room have done it in this way, where it's kind of like a sort of walking simulator, and the monsters are in just specific parts of the games. Because I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a wee fanny with uh, survival horrors, like you know. Right, so into the bathroom here on the left, and what you're going to do is stay at this big, juicy peach of a old butt snatch for about 30 to 45 seconds. 
you know, really take a good look in there while he's washing himself. That's obviously not pervy at all, but this is for an achievement. I'm not doing this to be a perv. Uh, we are going to get the McLeary achievement. Uh, get it? Leering? Lear? Because you're staring? You perv. Bro, that is actually just pure baby reindeer vibes. We've got real life uh, Scottish Martha coming for us now. Sent from iPhone. Uh, or spoken through iPhone, should I say, in this particular case. Huh. Right, hang out to the left then. You've looked at a guy's butt for enough seconds. We are going to head to the left and into the uh, next room. Not in the right there, but the one with the door open. So in we go. And that's just another uh, bit for the cabin achievement done. So we're going to go um, left, sorry, of the last cabin that we came out of. So take a left. And then we're going to take a left again into this next room here with the old British, the old British flag. Um, and that is another one done. So go to the left again. And we can... Now, remember, so obviously what I should say as well, as we head down the steps here, do not click in the left stick. The left stick is to sprint. Obviously, we want the achievement for sprinting for no more than 10 minutes. So a lot of this we're going to be walking um, as we take a right and go through this door and then straight through into the crew lounge. Now, um, so yeah, make sure to just be walking. Do not click in the left stick, uh, but go ahead, turn the TV on and turn the TV off again and then back on just to be on the triply safe side here. And then we can just go ahead and back out and go back the way we came out of the crew lounge and straight through. So, yes, again, as I said, do not sprint. I'll be telling you what we actually have to sprint over um, and um, where we can sprint. But again, just try to walk. So speak to these three guys first. Again, this is important for another achievement. Speak to these three guys. You can go ahead and skip that conversation. Ah, you can keep your grubby wee hands off me wee there, lad. Yeah, you knew. <laughs> Terrible Scottish accent. I'm so sorry, Scotland. Right, so go ahead and speak to these two guys in the middle table as well. Guy with the epic moustache. Yes, thank you very much. And there's another... Th uh, well, there's another three guys there, but you can't actually speak to them. So go ahead and speak to Bald Bro over here, who's eating some kind of... I mean, that looks, like a, that looks like a decent meal, actually. Egg and a big tomahawk steak. I'll take that. So that is three groups that you should have spoken to in here. So the three, the two, and then the one behind us. Then go ahead and speak to Big Roy behind the cafeteria. And that's going to get us our next achievement called All Beans and Forgiveness. McClary, to my office. That means no, not as soon as you're ready. And so, after having a really quick chat there with Roy, turn to your left, and we're going to have to go and get shouted at. Because, of course, if you have a boss, chances are they're a douchebag too. Um, not always the case, though, of course. So, head to the right, and we are going to just go out of here. I'm not going to say those words in there, because, of course, they mean something in Scottish Gaelic. But, of course, I can't say those words because my YouTube video, my U this guide will be taken down, probably. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, we're going to go outside. We're still in the intro, so there's another bunch of people that we are going to speak to out here. So, we're going to just go ahead, skip the cutscene, if you so wish. So, this is it. This is what an oil rig looks like, which is awesome. So, we'll head down the steps here. And then you can see a guy doing some welding. So, what we're going to do is actually speak to him. No, go away, you wee bass tool. Okay, fine. So, uh, go past where he was with the black bin bag there on the left. And just climb down the ladder. Now, this is where we can actually get one of our... Uh, it's called the Greased Scotsman Achievement. So, basically, if you click in the right stick as you're going down or up a ladder, um, as long as you get the save icon, that means that you get um, achievement progress towards the Greased Scotsman for sprinting over traversial things, such as, like I said earlier, climbing ladders, jumping over things, etc. So, continue heading down the steps and all around. Open up the old gate. And Now, a lot of this game is sort of uh, linear paths as well, um, but we are going to speak to these two guys. These count towards the 
speaking to broskies during the intro skis. And once you have done that, uh, turn to your left and basically go straight, then straight up the next set of big steps and talk to the next brosko. Uh, but another interesting fact about this game is um, the Chinese room really got their stuff together when they didn't just make a game and sort of went, oh, this, is what might be a, this is what an oil rig might look like. They really done their research on this game and I tell you what, it's, uh, I mean, goddamn, it does look like a proper, proper, really just, it's top. And it looks fantastic as well. So anyway, once you've spoken to Broski, go to the right and go down the steps. You don't have to speak to these dudes. Dudes. Uh, but what we're going to do, we are going to stick with this sort of left-hand path. There is going to be another guy that talks to us automatically. And it's going to be this guy here as he whips up his hoist. Get your hoist out me where you ween. Brr. And then finally, when we go to the left here, we're going to automatically get shouted at. Ah, Scooby, you stupid... G go and get Shaggy with your wee pal Shaggy. Now, the achievement Social Butterfly should unlock here, but if it doesn't, that's fine. Uh, it will unlock just at the end of the chapter. So if it hasn't unlocked yet, don't worry. It should unlock at the end of the chapter pretty much the same place that it did for me. So what you can do is actually sprint a tiny little bit there. If you wonder what the save icon was, that's because I sprinted a little bit to get uh, some achievement progress towards the Greek Scotsman. And then just pull this lever down and Kaz will do this automatically and then pull it back up. Um, so yeah, the, the one for sprinting, you'll we'll have to sprint at some point, especially later on in the game anyway. So uh, you'll get that bit pretty much automatically. So once we're on the way up, well... Enjoy the scenery of old offshore oil rigs. So once we're on, or off even, take a left, go up these steps and then interact with the door and it's definitely worth having a look because the the amount of uh, C words, I can't actually say it because again, I'll get cancelled from YouTube. Uh, but the amount of C words in this video, especially from Boss Face McDouchebag right here, is pretty much insane. Um, but it is funny. I, I genuinely love the way a Scottish person says the C word. Um, but again, nobody even comes close to the Australians and how they say it. They say it as a formal greeting. Where pretty much Scotland, Wales, and everyone else in the world uh, says it as a passive-aggressive, you know, tone, which is uh, which is fine. But Australians are very friendly, so if you ever get called the c-word by an Australian, you know you are in with them. Good guys, Australians. God, I love Australia. Okay, so continuing on straight, and we are well, effectively just taking a sort of a little linear path round for the time being. Christ, but you're a right pair. Two balls and a ball bag. Now listen, Pat. I promise. Guys! Christ! He's got gold! Shit! Guys! Get his leg! So, yes, during the game you will see um, part of your memory of Days Gone Past with your wife, Suze. Um, and we'll get... Uh, so, yeah, you've seen me get the achievement, the social butterfly, and the sticking end of the calm for surviving the event, which we don't know what the event is. But what we do know is it's a bit stormy now. Right. First things first, take a right, jump straight to the sea, and that's incredible death. Number one, that is full fathom five. Again, that is, the, that is four. Um, uh, that is four. Drowning or falling to your death 
in five different parts of the sea. But that doesn't count towards the uh, 15 deaths that we've got to go for. I know it's slightly confusing, but there we go. Right, so once you're over the other side, what you can do, make sure to click in the left stick as you're climbing up. And uh, that's to get um, a achievement progress towards the Greased Scotsman achievement. Um, so again, as long as you sprinted up the ladder and, you see, and you've seen the save icon, that means you know that you've got um, uh, progress towards it. And then it means you don't... So basically with that one, you don't have to sprint over every traversal object. It's only one that you come across. So we've done a ladder, so you don't need to sprint up a ladder anymore. Uh, once we get one over, you know, as we shimmy through things, you only have to do it on one particular ledge, etc., etc. But again, I'll tell you what and where to sprint over. So anyway, after the cutscene, head down the ladder, take a right, and interact with the lever before heading back up. Then we can simply go ahead and take a right since we've done that little part. Now we're going to go back through the gate here with the blue um, blue fence. Take a left and obviously head down. <laughs> Another thing I should laugh about, because of course people like to complain about everything, especially on Twitter these days, about the use of yellow paint. Well, there is an option in this game where you can actually reduce the um, visibility of yellow paint. Um, so that's uh, very good there from the devs. But yeah, people people have got it so tough these days, haven't they? Uh, make sure to do a sprint jump right there as well, so we can get over the other side. And again, a sprint jump again. Again, that should be another part to the Greased Scotsman achievement. Uh, but yeah, people have got it tough, haven't we, when we're complaining about bloody yellow paint on a game? Oh no! <sighs> yep, wieners. Anyway, again, we don't know what's going on, but as we get here, we're going to take a left, since that's the only place we can go. That's looking a bit ominous, isn't it? Magoed. Okay, so we're going to be coming up to our first out of 15 deaths ever so soon. Yes, there are 15 unique deaths, as I said, that we have to do. The first one, then, is going to be if we take a left down and we start... Uh, crawling across here. We're gonna get a quick time event fail the quick time event. So just don't press anything So what you're supposed to do is hold the left trigger But don't press anything just yet because we will fall to our death and that will be first out of 15 towards the um, Unique deaths that we unique deaths <laughs> that we have to do Okay, so again, we're gonna open up again another little quick time event here. Just hold the left stick there to the left and this time when we do cross the beam, make sure to hold, you just have to hold the left trigger in and you can get through to the other side. <laughs> and we're very quickly coming up to death number two out of 15. So make way for Willie. We're just going to go straight into the fire. And we're going to burn ourselves to a wee little crisp. I warned you. Didn't I warn you? Now this just reminds me of Willy from The Simpsons when, uh, you know, Kirk gives it the whole, I don't like the idea of Millhouse having two spaghetti meals in one day. And then Willy burns to death, yes. Ah, see, we shouldn't have been called guys. We should have been called Willy from The Simpsons. Anyway, when we're back, we are going to... Go ahead and turn the valve so that the flame goes off. And then, of course, we can crack on through. Pull the lever down and climb the ladder. And with this one again, we're going to shimmy across. Now make sure to sprint shimmy across this time. So as soon as we're shimmying across, click in the left stick. And again, as long as the save icon appeared at the bottom right-hand corner, that means again that you have progress towards 
the greased Scotsman achievement. So you should be on 36%. Um, because we've done the ladder, we've done across the uh, across the beam, we've done across the uh the uh ledge that we just went across. And again, we're gonna make way for Willy! Make sure to press the right trigger there as you jump in order to hold on. And then click the left, hold the left trigger as well. So we can continue on our way. Um, may get a little bit confusing there with controls, but that is it. So yeah, from now I'm going to be checking every time we do some of the Grease Scotsman stuff. Or we get some... Now uh, what we have to do then, we just have to basically walk forward. And then we can press the right trigger to hold on. And again... We're going to sprint across these, so click the right trigger to hold on, and then click the left stick to sprint. Again, once you've done that, you should get some progress towards the Greased Scotsman. Um, although I don't think it did for me right there. Oh, yes, it did. Yeah, it did. Sorry. So make sure you've sprinted across them. You should then be on to 45% as we take the next left and up the old Stairerinos. And then simply go ahead and you can unlock, but I'm not going to say the two words. You can come, you can come inside the door. Wouldn't highly recommend it, but in this case we have to. Uh, so basically this is going to start the next chapter. And there we go. So see, it's all, it's wonderful. But we are coming up to our third out of 15 deaths. So what we're going to do, we'll uh, take a left, nip down the ladder... Again, it's always worth trying to spread down the ladder as well, just in case. Um, just to get that little bit of Grease Scotsman achievement. There's nearly an animal alive that could outrun a Grease Scotsman. And then what we're going to do, this is where we're actually going to fall off. So climb up on this tiny little yellow painted ramp. And instead of going straight, take a left and dive, boys! Dive! Right into the deafness of Monster Hall Cityness. And that is death number 3 out of 15. So once we have unfallen to our deaths, uh, this time what we're going to do is jump up and get on the Shreep Cums. I'm just going to call them Shreep Cums because it's funny. Um, also, what I didn't realise until just now is uh, the Irish pronounce it as Gaelic and the Scottish pronounce it as Gaelic. Why? I hope you guys will lecture me on that one. Uh, so anyway, continue basically just climbing up the ladder. Again, making sure as we're walking not to be sprinting, because we don't really need to. Uh, now we can actually do a sprint. As we shimmy across here to the right, make sure to click in the left stick to sprint. And that should get you some more um, greased Scotsman um, progression. If you didn't get it there, just um, climb back down and go across. There's a couple of uh, other places in the game we can shimmy across. Anyway, uh, come up here the, on the left and we can just go ahead and skip the cutscene, but now we're going to have a little nice delicious torch bags on our head bags. So, what we'll do, you can actually click in the Y button now. That'll turn your light on, which will come in handy for a lot of parts in the game. Uh, but continue heading down these steps to the right and straight on. And we're actually going to get some more progression for the Grease Scotsman. So as we start squeezing our way in, make sure again to sprint here. And that should put us up to, if you have a little check here, should put us up to 63%, I think, now. So flying along beautifully. Okay, so continuing on our way again. I know it's slow, and I know all you want to do is sprint, but make sure not to sprint. Just don't do it, because it taint worth it. So continuing on your way up some steps. And we're going to get some more progression for the Grease Scotsman. So as we automatically climb under here, make sure to click in the left stick. You have to do it pretty quickly um, as you go towards it. Uh, again, there's plenty of these vents in the game anyway, so don't worry if you don't get it now. But if you want to get it out of the way, just go back underneath. Uh, make sure that you're sprinting, and again, take a little look, make sure that the Grease Scotsman has gone up, should be 72%, so once that is done, that's great, now just interact with the vent in order to unscrew it, and get your buns through it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is perfect for the uh, lunch lady Doris, have you got any grease? Yes, yes we do. Then grease me up, woman! 
Okie dokie. How perfect is this? It's a Scotsman in event trying to, well, not catching a dog this time, but that is perfect. That grease me up, woman. Anyway, heading through to the right, I'm going through these next couple of doors. And there's Finley. We are just, again, obviously just going to go ahead and skip this cutscene. <laughs> that was perfect. That grease me up, woman. Okay, so what we're going to do is just start heading down these steps. Now we're soon going to be coming up to our next death, which will be death number four out of 15. So take a right. Again, there are like places you can go and things you can look at, but there are, are a lot of dead ends. So, uh, yeah. So sweep come up the ladder. <laughs> you can see what the hell is that thing right there. Uh, well, I guess we'll just go to the left. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Oh, wait, we can't go to the left. We've got to go uh, down to the right here. Drop down. And take a left through the exit. This is where we are going to not only be getting a death, we're going to be getting an achievement soon as well. Um, so this first or fourth death here, what you're going to do is just go straight into the steam, get killed by the steam, and that's job done. Now, let's try that again without the death, huh? So, what we'll do is go straight into the left door, turn the valve. Again, obviously, right trigger. You know what to do by now. You've been playing this game long and hard enough. So, that'll get rid of the steam. Then, we can nip down the ladder once again. The street comes, sorry, not the ladder. And then, we can interact with this lever, or um, valve, sorry, and then climb up the next street will come. And finally, we're going to turn this third valve, and then that should be, there should be, ah, there we go, silencio, beautiful. Right, let's climb back down the street, come. And then when we get back on top of the street, come, we can turn to the left, now that we are steam free. And we're just going to climb through, or cl uh, press the B button there to crouch, if you hadn't figured that already. Apologies that I didn't tell you. Hit the lever, and get yourselves back up. A lot of street cam in this game. Okay, now I'm not sure if that's, this actually counts as a death, but we're going to do it anyway, just to be on the safe side. So basically... Just drop down, um, you're going to take four, so we're actually dying from fall damage, but again, not 100% sure if that actually counts towards it, but like I said, better to be safer than sorry, so die from fall damage, and then we'll just start back at the bottom of the ladder, so uh, once we get back on top, we will just head around. So yeah, again, a lot of the times it is just sort of linear paths. Uh, but we're going to take a right here. And then we are going to head down to the left. We are going to be coming up to another achievement now. So we again, obviously we're going to nip through here. Again, if you feel free to just sprint through these little traversal sections if you think you haven't been able to do one. Don't worry, there are new monsters in this bit, which is all good. And the big yellow pipe you see in front of us, we're going to make sure to try and sprint over that for some more greased Scotsman. So jump, make sure to sprint as well. And again, as long as you've got the save icon in the corner, that means it's counted. And you should be on 81% now for the old grease Scotsman. So again, if it didn't work, just uh, keep trying until you get it there. It's 
better to just get it out of the way. And then what we're going to do, we are actually going to uh, go straight in front of us and eventually we're going to start swimming sort of underwater. And then what we will do then is just die. We are going to drown more than a drowning Jason who drowned in Jason and he hates us. So just again, a little bit of squeezy beezies. And then just as we turn the corner, we're going to get up to the point where we're going to start finally going underwater right about now-ish. Nope, because we're going to take a right first. I promise we are coming up to it. But in fact, it's going to be this bit now. So, like I said, what you're going to do, you're just going to wait here. Wait here until you drown, and that will be another achievement. We will restart basically back at the beginning of the section, but that's fair, just fair. So, Dargan we gogan, Cerebral Anoxia Plus, that also does count as the fifth out of 15 deaths as well. So, pretty golden nuggets, that one. So, um, again, what it's going to do is put us back. You'll have to turn your uh, headlight back on because we are in the pitchness of blackness. But basically, we're back at the beginning of the section, so you're just going to have to follow the yellow... Follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow pipe roads, until we get back to the old swimmingy section. Only this time, we're not gonna drown, because we know better than that. So, of course, this time we are not going to drown, so you're just going to have to keep going. Now, you could have tried sprinting there, but it doesn't actually count. Uh, not until we get into a bit of the deeper water later on. So, heading left. Uh, ooh, some more stuff's going on. Will he hear you? Will he don't care? Uh, heading up the old Shreep Cam once more. Oh, isn't that quite the unfortunate way to fall? Right, so what we're going to do, we are going to turn around, we're going to head, you should see the door. Uh, that sounds pretty darn deadly. You can see the open door there, so we're going to squeeze our way in, and we're actually going to be coming up to our first body to look at out of 19. So there's 19 bodies that we have to find. The first one is in our way, he is on the stairs there, uh, which is unfortunate. But some of them you do have to interact with, so you press the X button next to them. And as you can see, he is pretty much, uh, I mean, yeah, he's got, oh, so, sorry, sorry, pal. Well, I guess we'll see how <laughs> you went down quicker than Scotland at the Euros. <laughs> sorry, Scotland. Uh, but anyway, once you've interacted with him, that does count as one out of the 19. So head down the ladder, head to the right. And, oh, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, we'll just continue going forward then. Thank you for that, Kaz. Okay, so we are now going to be heading up the steps once again. You can't even be nipping through the door, so don't even try. Just keep going up. When you're alone and life is getting you lonely, you can always go. Ach, dun dun. Right, take a right here and then take a left and then we will head into the next chapter. So we will get the story achievement there. Breathe in, breathe out. It's all about react. And then we will get a, another good with Lecky. All we gotta do is just simply turn on the heater here. We're gonna warm up our fingers. And basically until we get told to press the B button with the word next to it, that's when we can uh, nip it off. So once we press the B button to, um, <clears throat> yes, that, go back, um, we will head through the door and we're actually going to be getting our first optional phone call here. So take a right. We're going to nip through this door and you can probably hear it. It's not the best audio sometimes. Sometimes it can be quite tricky to hear. But if you just go ahead, press the X button next to the phone and you can press the B button to uh, skip the cutscene. But that is the first optional phone call that we can grab. Right, so in about a minute or so, as we head back out the way we came and heading straight down the hallway, we're going to be getting our first set death out of seven for the electricity. So heading through the left of door there, going up the steps. And then from here, we can take a right into the uh, Shea Lounge. Uh, straight through the door and into the Crew Lounge. Not the Shea Lounge, what am I on about? Um, there you go, TV should still be on. There is something weird going on. You're going to open the... they will try to open the door. Open the door! Well, that seemed to go pretty well, didn't it? Not. Okay, so uh, we're going to stick with the right-hand side of this room and go out the right-hand door rather than the way we came. Uh, obviously taking the left and the steps through the next door. And then uh, not sprinting all the way to the end. Again, try not to sprint if you can help it. Hello? And then we're going to come into this room. Again, nothing in here to crap your pants with just yet. So head to the left. Turn your headlight on. It's always worth doing that. And you're going to have a conversation with Big Roy Bags. Quick. Thank God you're all right. Jesus, what are you doing in here? All right. Thank you, me bald mucker. Right. Take a right into this uh, little pantry area. Actually, I think we've done that automatically. Um, and then what we could do is head through the vent there on the floor. So get yourself through there. And again, we are going to be coming up to the old electricon acoustic part where we have to get electrocuted by seven different electricity bits. So we head out the door. And you can probably already hear it, but it's going to be on our left and left again. And this is where we are going to get electrocuted plus. So this basically counts as death number six as well out of 15. So that's the not so good with Lecky. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what Lecky is, it's basically a British slam term for electric. There you go. The more you know, the more your brain grows. Um, so you'll die, obviously, but you get the not so good with Lecky. One out of seven and death six out of 15. Okay, so we'll just continue now. We are going to head up the steps out of this sort of kitchen area and up the steps. What the goddamn hell is that? Well, isn't that uh, something? Uh, but we're actually going to die from the monster now. So, well, it's, it's more of a poison, kind of looks like, I don't know, like poison ivy or something, poison oak, whatever it is. But this thing right here, just walk straight into it. You're going to die straight away, uh, but that will count as yet another death. Okay, you're going to die after three attempts, sorry, because we're playing on story mode. So once you have died again, that will count as death seven out of 15. 
So that's all good. This time, of course, so we'll start back at the top of the stairs. So this time we're going to walk away from the poison death machine. Jesus. Oh. So, of course, instead of sticking your nut in it, take a right and uh, get in here with the double doors. But take the next vent to the left. And now we're going to be coming into a room, and a couple of rooms as well, especially later on, where we can throw, like I said, 50 unique um, items. So they're all going to be the same. I think there's like four different unique items to throw. You can't just throw the same object 50 times. So you can throw cups, hammers, corned beef. Um, there's like five or six things. But again, you cannot chuck the same item 50 times. So this will obviously count as three out of 50, but you can... But there will be plenty of other thermostats and other mugs in the game that you throw, which do count towards the unique 50. So there's also hard hats as well. So everything that you see in this room, um, it's basically worth just throwing. Again, a little bit later on, about an hour and a half in, something like that, we'll get to a room where there is just so many more to throw. So don't worry about losing it or not getting the achievement. So again, there's hammers. Um, and again, you'll know when it's a unique throw when you get the save icon going on in the corner. Now with this radio, all you've got to do here is literally just stand here and wait until it's finished. Um, it's basically going to tell you the um, weather and all that, you know, sea stuff. Anyway, just stand here. Sometimes you might get lucky and you might just be at the end of the broadcast or you might get unlucky like me and I have to wait about four or five minutes. Uh, but whatever it is, you'll stand here and eventually the sailing by achievement will unlock. So... Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too, bruh. Give me my damn achievement! Okay, there we go, that's it. Sailing by! Right, so now that we have sailed by that, um, we are now going to basically just turn right around. So from the opposite side of the radio, Again, I was just having a, a little look there for more things to throw, but I don't think there's anything else left to throw. Always have a worth having a look at each room, just in case, but uh, I don't think there's anything left. So we can go straight through the door, where the cutscene will play, and then we think Santa's little helper is going to be popping through, and, uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know the drill. Nearly an animal alive that could outrun a greased Scotsman. So, head straight through to the Anlarak Cam. So, when we now get outside, we are going to go for death number 8 out of 15 and full fathom 5, 2 out of 5. So, we're going to start walking across this uh, little ledge, whatever it is here. Um, as soon as we get the QTE, make sure to fail it, so don't hold the left trigger. Just die a simple death, and that'll count towards, again, death 8 out of 15 and the full fathom 5, which is, once again... For falling in five different parts of the sea. This game does want you to die a lot. Is uh, That's uh, a little bit... Hmm. I wonder if uh, one of the devs has got something to hide or something here. Anyway. Well, <laughs> hopefully he'll hide it. Probably won't hide it as better as Dr. Disrespect, huh? Texting miners? What the goddamn hell is that about? Jesus, monkeys, man. Anyway. We, let's uh, streep up this box. Again, we're going to do a, a jump and a sprint and streep. And that will count once again towards the greased Scotsman. So make sure to do a sprinting jump. And then we should, you should now be on 90% left, which should only give us one more left to grab. So, uh, yes, so hopefully you're on 90%. If not, like I said, there's plenty of ladders and like other things to go through the game. Just make sure to sprint on one if you think you are missing one. Um, otherwise, again, just follow up the yellow paint around for now. Fucking bastard. <laughs> Gonna have to do a big chunky sprint and jump. So sprint, A, right trigger, and then hold the left trigger as well. Just so you ain't fall into your doom. Ah, shit. Jesus Christ. Let's not do that again. Hooray! 
Okay, here we go. We found the lifeboat, so there we go. That's it. Game's over now. Lovely job. Nothing can go wrong here. So all you got to do then, we're going to head all the way to the left. All right, well, not the last light lifeboat, but this one. And we have to do then on each side, there's a big green pin that we can pull out. So let's just head to the left first. Pull this one. Right trigger and then left, down left on the uh, left stick. So down on the left stick, sorry. Then do it the opposite side and then interact with the lever. And there we go, that's game ended. See, it's as easy as that. Now the lever. Get it into position. Nearly out of this. No! And fuck! <laughs> of course not. Of course nothing goes right and well in video games. So, we do get the home by Christmas achievement though, so at least Kaz will be happy about that. Uh, so we'll take a left up the next set of steps here, going through this next gate. And before doing that, before we actually can, now this isn't part of the optional phone call for the achievement, this one is mandatory, so you have to answer this to progress anyway. What the fuck are you doing to my life, folks? It's gone, it's just fell off into the fucking sea. You must have done it wrong. So, once we turn the corner, we're going to have to turn firefighter as well, apparently now, as well as oil rig worker. So, heading around to the right and to the back. Pick it up. Obviously, you need to Ligermach by pressing the right trigger. And with this, we will get the Fahrenheit 4051 achievement as well. God damn, what a, what a man of many talents, aren't we? As well as being bloody ruggedly handsome now. Unfortunately, this is not one of the items that you can throw because you've just got to press the B button to drop it. Anyway, heading up into this door and we're actually going to be getting the next, the second optional phone call, which is straight in front of us, so make sure to pick this one up. Who's that? It's Kaz, Ennis. Kaz. What's going on? Jesus, I, I need help. So here we are then, with the door, we're just going to take, um, uh, go into the next chapter. So, so fun, so far, so fun, right? Yes, we're loving it. It is a really good game, and honestly, the rest of the games that the Chinese room have come out with so far have been awesome as well. Uh, right, so, here we are, in the dark, luckily we've got a headlamp, so chuck that boy on. And we're actually going to be coming up now to the... Uh, one of the monsters for the first time. So we need to pull these uh, big gas bottles out of the way first. Ain't no gas for my ass, boy. And then we're going to go into the next area. So just take a left here, obviously, up the steps and through to the next door. And by going straight through to the next door, what I obviously meant was take a left and go through the uh, next vent. Ha! <laughs> Sorry. I steered you wrong. Anyway, pop that open. Again, Kaz with a man of many talents here, you know. Uh, looks like... Ooh, oh, where the hell are we now? Anyway, do a bit of climbing, or a bit of sweeping, sorry. Stuff is taking over. Christ. Don't fucking fall. Don't fucking fall. What?
So again, after just that linear path, we are now going to get a good couple of achievements here, plus another death. So we'll just walk around this little part of the area. This is where the monster is, and he will be having a little flicker around. So first things first, we're just going to go ahead and die straight from the monster. But what you can do, if you press the right bumper and left bumper, or left bumper or right bumper, you can actually lean. So what I do here is just keep spamming the right bumper and left bumper until the monster looks at us. And then we'll get the leaning into it achievement. So make sure to grab that one first by pressing the right bumper or left bumper where the monster is. Then we're going to die from the monster. Which is, that should now be death number 9 out of 15. And what we're going to do now to get another achievement called General Strike. We need to throw a throwable item at him. So what we're going to do then, we're going to take a right here so we can hide. For some reason he can't get out of here. Pick up the wrench. And then hopefully you should be able to hit him exactly not like what I do here. Because I chucked it way over his head. Uh, if that's the case, again, that's fine. Uh, because there are a good couple of items anyways. Another hammer and over on the right there's like a cup. Um, but yeah, so just throw one of your throwable interactive items at him to get the general strike achievement. I'm actually embarrassed to say that took me longer than uh, I anticipated and tried to do. My baseball career is over before it begins. Right, so you can actually go to the right now, grab a cup, and then what you're going to do is actually throw a cup to the right-hand side so that'll distract the monster, and you'll be able to get out of here. But he will chase you. But again, you don't have to worry, um, because you think you should just be able to sprint because he sounds close behind. You don't actually have to sprint. If you want to, just... You know, for a little bit of uh, easy access, that's fine. Um, but you should honestly be fine. So what you can do here from here, you're going to go into the left room. Um, he's going to chase us a little bit more in a sec. But yeah, a lot of these monster chases, especially on uh, just story mode, you don't really have to sprint. Which again, makes things nice and easy. I'm just looking for a couple more throwables, but there's nothing here. So go underneath the sink or whatever it is, head straight through. And we're going to get the Eye of the Needle achievement here for finding Roy in the back. What you doing, you wee barstner? Well, since he's not doing anything, the wee barstner. Uh, well, uh, I guess we'll just get the hell out of here, huh? Alright, so back into the pantry bit. Straight into the uh, main kitchen area once again. And then out of here. And we're going to go out of the door into the next chapter. And so another achievement's coming up. Hooray! Don't we really love it? Head to the left, of course, following the yellow, which, you know, for some reason people these days hate rainbow colours and the colour yellow. Man, people need to get a grip, huh? Uh, so just follow the boxes around, and eventually what we're going to do is come up to a uh, couple of items here with, as we go through the green container, but a couple of items with uh, some things that we can throw. We're going to throw one of those throwable items into the sea. So nip down. This ladder wants Morith. And then directly in front of us, this is where the uh, tongs are, or the uh, throwable. So make sure to turn around and toss this into the sea. And that will get us the Jetsum, Flotsum, Bopsum, Coxum achievement. Or just Jetsum again, for short. There we go, just make sure that unlocks. So head to the right, go down the ladder, and there's actually going to be another Electricon Acousity death. Which we're going to get, which will be the 2nd of the 7th, so make sure to die from this electricity. Alrighty, I guess we'll just start again then, okay. Right, this time we're going to go the exact same way, only this time we're not going to die with the electricity, of course. So, yeah, job done. 
Nice duck there, that's an unfortunate way to end. Although probably not as bad as... Uh, anybody seen Three Body Problem on Netflix? Where the boat gets completely, uh, you know, nanofibered in lots and lots of halves. That was a scene and a half, wasn't it? Jesus Christ. But a very good show if you haven't seen it. Three Body Problem on Netflix. Okay, right, since we're here, we don't need to throw anything into the sea. So we can just head down the ladder once again. Move it, move it, move it. Yeah, all right. King Julian. So head to the right this time, of course. And we're going to be coming up to our next body in just a little bit. Uh, so we're going to interact with the lever. Pull that one down. And it's going to be uh, body basically two, three, and four that's going to be coming up now. So we'll head back to the right. And we'll take another right because the fire has now been put out. And then we're going to take a left here and you're going to see one body slumped against the pipes. Make sure to press the X button here to interact with him. That was a bit of an overdramatic fall there from Kaz. He literally dropped by like a foot or something. Anyway, press the X button to make sure that counts. That's body count two out of 19. So now we're going to just squeeze our way through here. Adobe. Christ almighty. Jesus, Ennis. What are you doing up there? That thing will see you. That thing. Huh. Imagine if this were if the game just trolled us right at the very end with a Snickers advert. You're not you when you're hungry. And then, you know, the old uh, monster just turns back into a normal person. Ha! Oh, that would have been an epic troll. You're just hungry, huh? Well, okay, how about lots of death? Right, okay, so a uh, couple more bodies. Bodies three and four, which I think are automatic. They should automatically be. Yep, these bodies right here. So again, interact with this body. Um, it does actually count as three and four. So we're going to grab this hammer. We're going to throw it over to the right-hand side because we need to go straight ahead. So that's what we're going to do there. Nip in straight ahead. Again, you can sprint if you want, but it's generally not that necessary. Pick up the wrench or the spanner and throw it straight ahead of you. So then we can just nip off to the left to grab the hammer. And then with the hammer, we can throw it basically straight in front of us. That'll get the monster going to that direction. And we can go straight ahead. Even though we just walk straight under his big old tentacle nuts. <laughs> and then just continuing on forward. Uh, we're actually going to be coming up to another death now. So once we drop here, there is a save point, which is good. So we'll just wait here now for the monster to come and kill us. And that's going to be death number 10 out of 15. Already! No! Again, much prefer this not be in a survival horror because I would have crapped my pants too much for this. Right, so what we can do then is just jump straight down, go straight ahead of us. The monster, I think, is chasing us, but you should be fine to not sprint again. Just get straight into the container here, and then that's job done now when we get out of this one we're just going to fall straight into the sea so after this little cutscene has stopped we're just going to jump straight out shimmy our way across and then right on the ramp here we're just going to jump basically straight into the sea that's going to be full fathom five three out of five yay again try and reach the sea if you can though uh you know because uh yeah you know that's the achievement that's what it calls for Oh, yeah, and sorry, if you hadn't figured it out, if you click in the right stick, then you can look behind you. Probably could have done with that advice earlier, I know, and I'm sorry that I didn't give it to you earlier. Right, so now we are on the road again. We are just going to go into the left again. Heading over the street. We're going to go straight through into the vent. And there is going to be a body number five out of 19 that we're going to find. Again, make sure to interact with 
Um, <laughs> I mean, that's a hell of a lot of butt blood, broski. So interact with him and then go your way on the right. Heading under. And again, we're going to have to do some monster surviving in just a bit. Again, it's not so bad. Again, you're not you when you're hungry. Uh, so just keep walking forward to the right again. We're effectively following the yellow paint of life. Guys. Oh, fuck Christ. You all right? Can you get out? No. Okay, when we regain control of our character, go straight in front of us again, following the yellow paint. And then we're just going to wait uh, just a hot second. And if you're confident that the monster's gone, take a right. And you can walk, you don't have to crawl, screw that. And then right again, obviously just underneath here. And he knows we're here. But we're going to grab the hammer. We're going to throw it straight on top there, so that, that gives us a bit of time here to just squeeze through. Now, what I actually done, what you were supposed to actually do there was, um... What are you doing, you stupid... What you were supposed to do was actually throw the hammer the other way, I think. Because uh, he got right on my anus. There he is. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Again, any tools that you see, obviously make sure to throw them. And why not antagonize the beast that's trying to kill you as well? Why not? Why not do that for a laugh, isn't it? Okay, so once you're done antagonizing the big bad boss, push the button. And then you're going to push the up button. What that'll do then is get the monster out of it so we can actually head back. So climb under, but just wait here just for a couple of seconds until monster madness goes away. That should be plenty of time. So head up the ramp. And now you can quickly make a book uh, to the left hand side. Come on, lad. Come on. Oh, shit. No. Jesus. God damn, that was a long old ride. But we made it. And while that's saved, why not electrocute yourself to death too? So you can see it on the left there. So stick your tongue straight on the electric. Nothing bad will happen apart from death. The sweet, sweet embrace of death. Okay, so that should be not good with the lecky three out of seven. And in just a minute, we're going to be going for full fathom five, four out of five too. Right, so this time we are just going to go straight through the gate as we enter. Going straight through, we're going to again nip our way around. Is that we are leaving. And we are leaving now. Then take a left, getting up the stairs, and we're almost out of here finally. Better than to let you two. Oh, don't say that. I'm... But since this is a video game with a monster, of course we know that is not the case. The helicopter eventually crashes, burns, but we get the achievement. Everything breaks, and what we'll do is turn around and we're just going to do the old uh, Ezio Auditore de Firenze. Jump, leap of faith off the cliff here, or oh, cliff the helipad, and that is going to be four fathom five, four out of five. So we've just got one more place left to grab that. That's not the achievement; that's just game prayers. Um, and we're going to be getting a another two optional phone calls coming up. So once we regain our consciousness for like the fiftieth time in the game already, Ethan Winter style, um, we'll just head straight in front of us. And you can see the obvious looking uh, ladder. We're going to go down on the left. Mm. 
Right, once you get in this little cabin -y area, before heading out, what you're going to do is take a left. In the back left of this corner is the phone. So that's going to be optional phone call three out of eight. Oh, in fact, no, sorry. You know what? This is actually mandatory. So you have to do this to progress. Sorry. Almost got my bearings mixed up there. So you do this to re uh, to progress. And then what you can do is there's nothing throwable in here again. So don't worry. But you can go through the stick. Go, go a little tiny bit down the stairs. And then you should hear the phone ringing again. So make sure to go back and grab this optional phone call. This is optional phone call three out of eight. So yes, hopefully you managed to grab that one there. Again, it can be very tricky to miss these phone calls. But we're going to be coming up to the next one as well pretty quickly now. So heading to the left, into the old engine of earring. So grab your earring and stick it in the engine. And that's how they came up with the name Engine Earring. Um, but we're going to be going for optional phone call 4 out of 8 pretty much straight away. So you can see an office straight in front of us. You're going to go into that office. Take the door there just to the right. In here? No, no one's in here. Go away. And there's the phone. Pick it up. 4 out of 8. Good here. So, what we'll do is obviously turn around, get the hell out of this office, because there ain't much in here. Uh, we're going to go into the fire extinguisher room first. Grab the fire extinguisher. We're going to need this in order to get rid of a fire. Of course, that's that's what normally happens, unless you're like a magician and you can try and stick your way through, but then you burnt all your sizzling steaks off. I don't know. Anyway, sizzle whizzle and get through that nizzle. Now, there are a whole bunch of cups here, unfortunately, and none of them count, so we can't actually pick any up, which is just grande. Uh, go in the door straight in front of us there. We are going to be going down, once again, of course, to engine earrings. I'm going to check out those uh, engine bay earrings, because they are so cute. Uh, pretty soon, we're going to be coming up to the not good with lecky part again as well. So we're going to need to press the right trigger here, pull this big thing out of the way. And that should give us a nice bit of a gap right there. Nice bit of brew. Uh, head through to the left. Now, what we're going to do first, there's the electric in front of us, but we're going to take a left. We're then going to take a right over this table because this is actually going to be the next save point. As you can see, top bottom right-hand corner, game saved, job done. So what you can do now is go back the way you came and hit yourself with the electricity, which will be four out of seven. <laughs> So, next up, we're going to go for death number 11 out of 15, which is the next part of the monster. So, you can see one of your bros get dragged away. As soon as we get here, there would be a chase sequence, but what you're going to do instead of going to the right, you're just going to go straight into the left and get devoured by, I don't know, what looks like King Charles's head. So, we're going for a King Charles head type looking monster. So, that will be death uh, 11 out of 15. But yes, we are going to be chased. And again, you don't have to use the sprint. If you're playing the story mode, you don't have to use uh, the sprint if you don't want to. You should have um, pretty much plenty of time. So with the GFC, the JFC, sorry, I can't even spell. So what we'll do then, we'll just go straight in front of us, jump over this table. And then we are going to go to uh, basically straight on over the next table. Take a right and then a left down to the general office. Ooh, that's generally fantastic. Uh, straight through the door, take a right, take a left. And then you're going to have to do some crawling. No stalling, all crawling, baby. When we get out, we're going to take a right into the bathroom. Now, you have to pull this trolley all the way out. Don't do what I've done here and do it halfway. You have to pull it as far back as you possibly can. Because, yeah, I got stuck. Even though, for some reason, you can only pull it with just a yellow bit for some reason. But I did almost get caught. Look, that was pretty bloody close. Uh, go straight in front of you, into the next door. 
Take a left. Give yourself a little squeeze. Squeeze them buns in. And then we'll just drop straight down. Oh, in fact, no, we're going to take a left. The monster's going to come back out, so you need to go back the opposite way. Now the floor's going to collapse. Our ankles are going to break. Almost. We're going to go straight in front of us. Jump over the table. And we'll take a left. Take a right now through the bookcases or whatever. And we're actually going to be coming up to another electricity part. So the electricity is right in front of us as we exit the door. So make sure to kill yourself by this door. And that will be uh, not good with Lecky. Five out of seven. And again, the save point is literally just before that anyway. So hopefully you managed to do that and that's all good. So uh, yeah, so hopefully you killed yourself with the electric there. If not, just go into the right, then the left. Stuff's going to happen, but I think the monster has actually gone now. So it's all good, baby. And then just continue on forward. Oh, in fact, no, I don't think he's gone, actually. Uh, no, he's definitely after us. So, basically, just run to the end of the corridor, and you should be golden as. Okay, so now we're gonna now we're back on the outside, which is exactly what we want. We like the outside, don't we? I am the king! Escaped from Monster Renick. And we're also gonna get full Fathom 5, 5 out of 5 for the 5. So, take your left. You can see the helicopter. Normally we'd have to do some climbing up it, but what we're gonna do by this little yellow piece of ramp, just jump straight down into the sea where you're gonna take a P. No, you're not, because you're D-E-A-D. But that should now be the full Fathom 5, 5 out of 5, and that will get you the achievement unlocking. There it is. So when you're done with this, what you have to do is do a sprint jump again. Hold the right trigger. And then you're going to have to hold the left trigger as well in order to um, pass the QTE and then just pull yourself up. And again, as we turn, you're going to have to sprint jump over this side, trying to avoid the blades as well. And then another cheeky sprint jump. Well, didn't I almost just suck an absolute rope bags right there? And that was also almost terrible. Okay, so again, bit of a linear path for the time being. Alright, go ahead, take a left here. We can't get it out of the way. Uh, we, the gas bottles are in the way, so go around. Pull the gas bottles out of the way, and then go back around and to the left. Right, time for another optional phone call. Get inside the building. The phone's going to be blaring on the right-hand side, so give that a picky-uppy. That's number five out of eight now. So, nip it down the hatch, broski. Nothing else to do here, but nip it down the hatch. And we're going to get through the gate with our little QTE screwdriver. <sighs> and we're obviously going to give this a little pushki off. So, pushki, pushki. Give it a sprint jump. I got a bad case of pushing you. Um, we're obviously going to take a right. There's nowhere else to go. We're going to nip in through the blue container. And out to the side and a little bit more climbing. Again, trying to do a sprint jump. If you don't think you've done it already, make sure to do that. For the uh, Greased Scotsman achievement. And nip it in through the door. 
Hello, boy, oi, oi. Right, we are going for, what are we going for now? The not good with Lecky, six out of seven. So we're just going to basically go straight down. There's some electric water. Zap it, dead it. So, when we start, click your headlight back on. This time what we're going to do is climb up the ladder. We're actually obviously going to turn the electricity off. So on the right, that's where the switch is, and then go back down the ladder and to the left. And we're going to be coming up to another death. Now, we've had steam, we've had fire, but we haven't had gas in our face yet, have we? Nope, we haven't had the old Dutch oven yet. So, here it is. Just make sure to stand square in the old Duchess of Ovenists until we die. It does take about a minute or so in order for you to pass out and die. Which, if you're holding your partner's head under after a big, big kebab, then uh, this is effectively the same sort of death stink. Anyway, stay here until you die, and that'll be death 12 out of 15. Oh, well, that went quicker than I thought. Um, I thought it was like a minute or so, but apparently it's only about 30 to 40 seconds. Close enough. Right, so we're going to be starting to enter areas as we climb up again. We're going to be starting to enter some areas. Again, we have to do this again, turn the electric off and go back to, through the gas chamber. Oh, don't say that. Uh, but yeah, so in the next couple of rooms, we're going to have a whole bunch of items that we can throw. So we just need to make sure to try and throw as many as we can, just in order to get that achievement out of the way. Makes it a bit easier for us. <coughs> so once you get back into the Dutch oven, take a right, go past the gas and right again. Turn off the valve. This will basically be like ending your relationship for uh, sticking sticking the partner's head under the uh, blanket for so long. Then push the gas balls out the way and we can nip on through again. Finley. Jesus, am I glad to see you. Aye, you and all. And this is the first room then where we have a lot of items to throw. So the first lot here, there is a uh, can, there is a hammer. So that's another two added. Now, if you can have a look, you can see through the incredibly darky darkness that there are these little like vents that we can crawl into. So we go up to the left there and we can nip out over to the other side. We're going to be nipping up through a lot of those vents in order to get and throw a lot of uh, items. Uh, there's just a cup in this room and then the control room, which is to the right of where we are. There's going to be another item in there. Oh, there was a couple of hard hats in there as well, which uh, worked out well. So two hard hats in this control room and a mug. And then what we could do is actually turn on the lights, which will make things a bit easier for us. But of course, you know exactly what's going to happen. Old King Charles' he uh, monster head's going to be all like, Oh, I say, rather, sausages and uh, patties and all that. And of course, it's not going to go too well, is it? So we're going to head back out. The monsters are not here yet, though, so don't worry about that. Uh, but we'll take a right... We'll grab another hard hat that we can throw, and another can, so give that a little tossy toss toss. Again, no monsters are here, but when we go down the steps, there is a hammer, and then we'll can... Ah, well, that generator didn't work, did it? 
So if we have a look down these steps again, we can see there are a couple of items that we can throw. Um, if you go into these vents, these are the vent, little vents I'm talking about. On the left and on the right, there is always um, a good couple of items to throw. So there's another can, there's another wrench right there. And then if you have a look at the other side, there may be something. Yes, there is. Ah. So give that a little ah, throw. What, like a charm? Yeah, if a charm was robbed or something. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, up we go. Up these steps we go here. There's going to be, uh, I think there may be like a hammer or a cap just on the floor right there as well. If not, there is one underneath here. So give that a toss. And then there are two or three spray paint cans. There's one just underneath. And then where the mud handling is, Right on here, there are another two cans we can grab and throw. <sighs> there we go, got there eventually. And there's another can. And another hard hat as well. So give these a little toss before we get through the dross. That is the mudnitling, <clears throat> mudness handling. Turn off the old valve, the old Gremich. The old Gremich cum. Uh, nothing, nothing beats a good old Gremich cum. Then just head down the Sreep cum. Right, now this is going to be a room. This and the next room is going to be a good room. So, uh, for throwing a hell of a lot of items. So, what, well, uh, now the room generally is quite small. You can see that the monster is in the middle of the room. Um, and that is the actual direction that we need to go. Um, so you can just have a look. If you can, just try and follow me. Uh, grab some items and throw them. Or just try and get into every vent. Throw what you can. And then we will head. So where the monster is in the middle of the room, we'll be going left. Up. A whole bunch of steps. And it is actually this room, which I was talking about a few minutes ago. So there's the monster right in the middle of the room. Um, there is another body. I don't think he counts, though, as part of the body count. I'm not entirely sure. Um, sure. But again, just go through sort of each vent, picking up items, giving them a throw. Again, if you don't get all 50, you know, if you don't get the achievement in this room, um, there are, again, plenty of objects to throw a little bit later on. So again, when we need to continue... Go back to the monster and we take a left, a whole left up a whole bunch of steps into another room. <sighs> So yeah, again, I do apologize about that. It is quite dark in this area, and when you're trying to do stuff, it can be a little bit confusing, but there we go. We head left up by the monster. We can go in. There is another hammer here. This is actually where I get my achievement now. The uh, look at all this mess. Again, you might have got it earlier before, or you may get it a little bit later, so don't panic if you don't have it just yet. Um, but let me just show you here, then, where you need to go. So that's basically the middle of it left by the monster and then up these steps and into this room so that is the look at this mess one done now we're going to head through take a right and we're going to go up some sweep comes
So again, with that linear path done, we're going to take a right, since that's pretty much the only way we can go, straight through into the Dornus. And, oh, it's all going to go mad. Oh, no. Luckily, we've hit it right at the valve right there. So uh, let's just uh, turn that steam off, shall we? No steamboat willy up in here, bro. Uh, so nipping through into the next door. And ew, spooky, huh? That must be it. A wee hut over on the other side. I know far now. So, as you can see, then there are still quite a lot of items left in this area. Um cups and thermostats and cans and still everything so head down the steps anyway to the right now and this is actually where the monster is and this is actually where we're going to get the next death death 13 out of 15 so what we'll do we'll just head down um there he is so we need to head down uh go to the opposite side and basically just wait until our fate beseeth be bequeaths us or beseeths us uh, i forget which it's called Right, now we can do this section properly, and it's not too bad, actually. All we got to do is pick up one of the hammers, throw it in the opposite direction, and then we should have plenty of time to get across the opposite side, up the ladder, and down the hatch. So, let's crawl straight through. Again, you can grab the thermostat if you want, throw it over to the right, basically the opposite side of where we were, and then again, that should give us now ample enough time. Again, you don't even have to sprint. You can if you're feeling a little bit scared, a little bit worried, but you should have plenty of time to just nip it around, up the ladder, and then to the right and down the hatch. Down the hatch, bird! So, these switches here, this is a little puzzle that you've got to do in a specific order. So, from left to right is obviously 1 to 5, so we'll start by switching the 5th switch. Ignore the tape there, so switch 5. Then three, then two, then four, and then number one. So once you've gone that in order, that'll go e pew, and then the generator still won't work. But there will be a key behind us. We need to key up. Guys, guys, are you there? Yeah. All right, let's get out of here, but not the way that I'm trying to go because, of course, that way is locked. So, yeah, we need to go back out the Ventus. Ventus Melentus. Venti Melenti. Do people still get angry when they have to order a Venti uh, coffee or whatever at Starbucks? It's just a large, damn it. So, anyway, we're going to turn to the right now. I don't believe there's a monster in here. Um, or at least not yet. So then we go up these steps to the right. Put the key in the ignition, he'll do it automatically, and that will get us the, uh, where are we, the compression ignition achievement. Sounds like an R. Kelly song, but of course we're not going to talk about that guy. <sighs> that worked, guys. I can see where the fault is. It's blowing a fuse back in mud handling. Mud handling? So, as I said, that'll get us the compressor ignition achievement. Now we have to dart straight away, so it's straight down the steps. Head to the right. Uh, back up the steps we go. Again, click on the right stick, see how far away he is. Just make sure you're at a good straight. There we go. So we might be a little bit closer. Again, you can sprint for like, you know, a couple of seconds if you so wish, if you feel like he's too close. Um, you know, give yourself a little bit of breathing room. Uh, straight back in through the mud handling door. Blah! And there we go. Gibby. Goodbye, King Charles the one millionth.
Right, so once we get out of this door, back to the linear path we came, go to the right again, down the steps. And again, it's not over just yet. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go where the monster is. Now, take a right. And we're going to duck underneath this vent. Then we're going to let go left, go past this monster here again. And then we're going to go back up these steps. And we are now going to press the lever. This, again, a monster will be here. And he will be absolutely disgusted with what we've just been doing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. But I want to kind of not die tonight. Oof. God damn, that bro is angrily. Again, like I said, you're not you when you're hungry. Have a Snickers. Right. Break out of there and immediately, no sense in stopping. We're going to go straight to the left. Then to the right. Through the vent cover. Again, if you do manage to get caught, just give yourself a little couple of seconds sprint. You should be fine. And then we can just sneakity beakity. So the monster is still in the next area. So what we're going to do is we will just take a right. Now, down the steps and go straight through into the vent. We shouldn't see you, but that's fine. But what we're going to do is throw a hammer over to the left-hand side so we can continue going to the right and then throw a uh, this paint can or whatever the hell it is. Throw that over to the right as well just to give him that bit of distraction some more. <coughs> and then we can just head straight up these steps, getting out of here. Whee! And then once we get into the control room on the right, again, we'll smash it up and it is job d -d -d done. And then we will get the into the belly of the beast achievement. Fuck off! Into the belly of the beast. Now, is that an Iron Maiden song or am I being stupid? I'm sure that's an Iron Maiden song. Anyway, um,. You'll have to wait a few seconds, but um, eventually you will be able to answer the phone call. Finley? Cut. No. And with that bit finally done and dusted, let's get out of here. Now we can finally go through this door and we can head down the sweep come. And what looks like an outside trip sadly remains with we're still inside. So that, uh, yeah, it's not good. We're still not breathing in any air. So uh, we're going to head to the right. So go down the steps, head to the right, grab the fire extinguisher, and then go to the left and pop that one out. And we're actually now coming up to death 14 out of 15. So what we'll do is head back down the sweep come. <laughs> That's still funny to me. And then we can go on this small beam. And then we're going to fail the QTE. Make sure to fail that one. You're going to... Oh, Jesus Christ, we don't have a head. Mitch, what the... What the how the hell are we seeing where we're going? We don't have a head. Anyway, uh, that does count as... Um, uh, death 14 out of 15. I'm very sorry. That literally, that we are playing a headless guy. Uh, but anyway, do the QTE this time so we can get through to the other side. Um, yeah, that threw me, threw me for a, threw me off for a big one right there. Um, right. So now we're going to press down on the counterweight control. We're actually, and we're also going to be coming up to body number six out of 19. So we're going to sprint, jump across, head down the sweep come, and then press down again for the weight control.
and again, give it the little sprint, jump, leap of faith, faith of faith. And then just continue all the way around, climb up the ladder, and this is where body number six out of 19 is. Ah, oh, Christ. Right, so once we head down, have a look at the ramp here. We just basically need to do a big, big sprint jump across. Remember to hold the right trigger as well and potentially the left trigger. Oy, oy, oy. A lucky mucker almost. And then just do the same straight up to the ladder and climb down it. Whack out the valve, give it the old spin toppy dicky dock of life. And then that will do lovely, because we ain't going to get burnt to a crisp. Right, so with this one then, what we're going to do is... Ugh, it's a bit it's a bit wobbly, huh? So we need to go down the street come. We need to press down again on the counterweight, but what's going to happen is... It's going to get stuck. As you can see, which is... Obviously a pain in the behind, so we need to go across um, this pipe. Again, if a QTE happens, make sure not to fail it. And then just go and fix the fugues box on the other side. Right, now we're finally back. Let us go down on the counterweight control again. And this time, what you're going to do is, as it's going down, you need to basically... Oh, yeah. yeah. Press it again, and then you just need to walk on it as it's going past, because it doesn't stop directly in front of you. So, just as it's going past, walk on it, because uh, you will take a bit of fall damage if you leave it go all the way. Then we can just simply, once again, head down the sweep come. And we are now going to get the final, finally, Greased Scotsman achievement. Finalius. And the next body count as well. So the last Greased Scotsman one we have to do is basically just sprint while we're swimming in the water. That's exactly what we're going to do to get that one out of the way. It is. Okay, back to the winch controls. So this is where we're going to do it then. As soon as we get underwater, click left stick in to start sprinting. The Greek Scotsman achievement should unlock. Plus. We need to make sure to uh, find the body, which will be body number seven. And it should just be more or less directly in front of us. Um, there's the low head room. So if we have a look just underneath the water again, there's the body. So uh, mm, you can't interact with him, but as long as you're just looking at him and... Hey, pal, you okay there? You're looking a bit alive, but yeah, never mind. You're not really swimming or anything. Yeah. Anyway, let's get out of it. 
Right, so once you have got that shit again, uh, keep checking your uh, achievement trackers if you so wish, like we're going to right now. Um, good with Lecky, that'll be 92%, so don't worry about that. But the body count, that's what you should be on, 36 percentages. So with that one done, we can now just head up the steps. And we're still not outside. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Right, we are going to be coming up to body count eight uh, in just a few short seconds. So we'll head down the steps. And then what we'll do is we're going to head to the left hand side. There's basically a little bit that we can climb up here on the left. So that is what we're going to be aiming for. Hey. So once we've released the valve, this is where we can actually now get the next body or find the next body, body number eight. So head into said water and there it is floating harmlessly and deadly. In fact, there's a couple there. So one of them will definitely count. Maybe that's a third one. Anyway, oh, sorry, mate. Just banged your head in the, in the uh, afterlife. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so go for a nice, long, slow walk up. Again, just keep double checking the body count. So that did go up. But we are going to start getting underwater. The water is going to rise. So what we can do is if you just keep mashing the right trigger button, that will actually give you... So instead of sprinting forward, keep mashing the right trigger and that will get you a burst of sprint without actually using the sprint ability. Or even if you just hold the right trigger, I think you'll be able to just slam your way straight up. So many buddies, so many buddies. I don't like it, no, no. Okay, up to the left here. You can obviously tell where we're going because of the color yellow. Oh my gosh, the color yellow is disgusting. Right, this is very important to count to one of the bodies. The door is locked on the left, but make sure you interact with it. And make sure that Kaz says something like, ah Christ, poor guy, or something like that. Make sure to interact with that door because even though it's locked if you walk straight past it you will have missed his body and you'll have to come back and do it all through. there's no chapter select so you'd have to play through the entire game again so as long as you interact with that and you just check the body count percentage went up you are good as golden keep closed at all times door right okay well let's let's uh, get our way through let's uh, pull the lever get that boy doing and ooh, what's happening? We're going down. We're going down the hutch. Going down hutch park. Gonna <laughs> swim my life away. So this pain's a little bit of a pain in the butt. The, basically, the water's rising. We just have to find our way. Um, so if we go up to this part right here, what you can see then is in the top right-hand corner is a ladder. This door's locked, so we have to wait for the water to rise, like so, and then we have to head to the top right-hand corner to where that ladder is. So just look for the door. There we go. So there's the ladder. So we'll climb up there. Again, if you want to use a little bit of sprints, you are obviously more than welcome to do that, just to get a few seconds going. Now what we need to find is like a little window. 
And it can be a little bit disorientated. It's like a little, obviously, yellow window. That's what you're looking for. But it can be a bit disorientating with the water rising and unrising and things like that. Um, but it is in this general vicinity. It's right where the vent looking things are. There it is. So that's what you're looking for. So we need to get out of there. Bruh, come on. Be a little bit quicker. That's what I mean. Swimming is disgustingly slow, actually, in this game. So it is... <laughs> you can use just 10, 15 seconds or so of sprinting just to, you know, keep it going. But up the ladder we go, then turn it around, and then just quickly go through this tiny little vent gap thing. And then, again, like I said, it is definitely worth just using a little bit of sprint just so we can get out of the water. But there we go. I didn't use any sprint at all, but it was definitely worth doing that. So what we'll do is get up and just nip it through the door. And then some more swimming, because who doesn't love a good swim in the coldy, watery, oily thing? So we need to do that is basically head down and head all the way down to the bottom of the floor in order to get through the hole in the bottom. You can't actually get through any of the other holes. You have to swim most of the way to the bottom. Once you get through, nip your way back up to get yourself some air. Right, so finally, we are coming up to the final death. Of all possible deaths to death, we are going to death this up. So what you're going to see then is uh, what uh, supposedly looks like, uh, well, it's O'Connor. What are you doing there? Now, basically, you're going to have a little cutscene. After the cutscene, you're going to get stabbed with a tentacle, and what you're going to do is just leave it. So skip the cutscene and fail the QTE. The old quickness of timeless events. And again, the reason we're doing that then is because this is the 15th and final death, and that'll give that, that will give us the Finlay Destination Achievement. So there we go. So don't spam the X button. Don't even touch it. Just wait until your inevitable demise, and job done. And then what we do when we come back down here, then you have to do the whole thing again, and then spam the X button to live. I want to live. Uh, hello? Mary, no! Oh, up. Is that you? Go away! Oh, Christ. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> so, once you've lived, you just want to live, head it up the stairs, Basically booking it the only way that we can go. I have I gotta get the fuck out of here. So again, it's just one of these big old giant lever machines then. We have to pull up the pin from the left and then pull, push the lever up. You know, we've done enough of this throughout the game so far. All I want to do is go home for Christmas. 
I would walk 500 miles. Probably walk another 500 more. Anyway, once that's done, just start having a little walk along the walkway. Yeah, I'll see you up there. And then we do have to have a little nip in the old oily water. No, we'll don't get around then just yet. Now then, you'd think that would be it, because uh, it kind of looked like the end of the game, but <laughs> we've still got just a little bit left to do. So we get the surface in achievement anyway for escaping from the pontoons themselves. And where are we now? In just a hot second, we're going to be getting optional phone call six out of eight. So take a little uh, turn to the left when we can. In the eighth furek. Uh, so yep, take a take a right, go into the left here, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna Jesus. we are going to find a heater, and it's in this left hand side booth, so chuck it on. And then again, when you have enough, you should be able to press the B button to um uh, to back out. And that's it. Get out of this fucking place. I need to get him. Thank Christ. I better check on Roy. So once we've pressed B to yep, do that, head to the right and interact with the optional phone call. Roy, fuck's sake. In fact, what this might be is the mandatory phone call and then we'll open the door and then we'll go back back actually yes so yeah very important there yeah so this is the optional phone call sorry so the first conversation with roy was the mandatory one go outside the door a little bit and then go back in and that is the optional phone call number six out of eight right so what we do now is i mean coming sort of in the final stretch of the game it's a lot of walking um but we still got a lot of chases and things to get through so you know it's all good. Anyway, just go ahead and follow the path to the left. Shit, that's oil dripping and everything. One sparking. Fuck. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is happening to me? Ah. ah, that was nice, wasn't it? But still going into the old processing quad. Take a right and ride up the stairs again. Of 
Okay, it's never ending. We have to now grab something for our broski right here. So take a right, and you're going to have to do a little bit of a running sprint. There we go. Into the old Kiamthra Gjolkacht. Yeah. Yeah, that stunk, didn't it? Stunk out the joint. Anyway, head through the door here on your left. And then we can crawl out of the vent. So when we get onto the elevator here, we're going to close the gate, important to close the gate, press the down button, and what's going to happen is we're going to get stuck and the monster's going to go absolutely ape b -b -b batty on it, ape booty on it, um, but he doesn't try and get us, so it's just a scene that we're just going to watch and chill out with for a minute or so. So there we go, once it's free we can climb out and we can head to the right. We can find a wrench, um, that can actually be used for the Jetsam achievement. If you didn't get it earlier, pick up the wrench there and throw it into the water. Um, otherwise we're going to head on the outside, and because, yeah, the monster's right in the middle. So, uh, you know how dangerous that would be? As it turns out, pretty damn dangerous. So push the button. And then what we need to do, we need to just wait until the monster is not in our direction. As long as he's not, we can just head straight forward. He can't get us under here, which is fine. Grab the hammer, throw it over to the left-hand side. And just wait until he disappears. Wait until he goes. And then you should be good to just make a break for it. Over to the other side on the outside again. Okay, so with the valve turned off, uh, we can now crack on, but the monster is still about, so just wait. As long as he's over the opposite side and not on our right here, then that's good, because then we can just head to the right and head through the gap in the vent. And interact with the supposedly main valve, I suppose. Yeah, why not? Oh man, I mean, of course we can't just jump out the window to our safety. Uh, nope, we need to go down the Sripkam. And this is a kind of, um, it is a chase sequence. So not at this part, but basically when we interact with the next door in front of us. Uh, again, you can sprint for a good se couple of seconds here and there if you so wish, but personally I didn't sprint at all. Uh, so what we need to do is just, uh, we're going to take the next right up the couple of steps. And then sprint jump. And now if you want, it's always worth just sprint jumping over these just to make it go a little bit quicker. Don't worry if you get caught though. Uh, interact with and do the quick time event here quickly. Chuck that one in, go straight forward. Again, ignoring all the noises. Oh, Jesus. Right, quickly jump over. Head to the left. Now you're going to have to do a big run and jump now. So try and sprint jump as hard as you can and then press the right trigger. Don't worry if you get caught like that, um, but from here I would do a little bit more sprinting just so you can get underneath the box right here, and you should be good. So all we got to do now is head to the top, throw a beacon up, and get the achievement called 
A beacon in the dark. Shit. I'm doing this! Shit. Yeah, but the, uh, then again, we do have to get back. So there's no monster chasing us. So again, don't worry. Don't take your time. Jump over the gap. And again, just, uh, you could, again, you could do a little sprint jump, you know, over these things. It literally takes like a second. Sprint jump over these. And then just keep doing this until we get to the end, where we smash our own noggin in. Proper Scotland style. In fact, we start going... <laughs> I said it earlier, but the bridge starts collapsing again. Quicker than Scotland's collapse at the Euros. Ah, oh, God, I'm sorry. Because Wales didn't even get there because we lost to the worst Poland side in a long time. Sadness for both ends. But I suppose we aren't playing football like England under Gareth Southgate, so, eh, you know, positives and negatives, eh? Pick up the pieces of your mess. Why do you have to... Ah, sirs. Oh, fucking Christ. Oh, this... Oh, my God. Now, as perilous as that last bit looked, then yeah, it was pretty beautiful, actually, wasn't it? So, anyway, we head to the left. Got some more big, angry, shouty things going on. Because where the hell not? Uh, jump down the ladder of course, uh, the steps, and then the steps again. And once again, we're going for a long old walk. Slow old walk. Finley, Jesus Christ. Cleary, how the fuck are you no dead? <laughs> 
gas separation. Sorry, it's obviously a serious thing, but it's always funny, that one. Right, we are going for a swim now. So, uh, again, what you'll be able to see is a couple of air pockets. Now, at this point, it's not too bad. You don't really have to use any of your sprints. The game will tell you to sprint here, but, um, again, if you've been using a lot of the sprint, it might be worth just uh, holding off. Uh, but we're only heading up here to the ladder. And then what we're going to do is take a left, I believe, through the door. No, it's a right, sorry. So it is a right, and then we are going to head in, back into the water and head down. Now, if you just hold on to the right trigger, and then a quick time event will appear at some point where you have to spam the A button, like now. So, oh, just hold the A button and then keep on holding the right trigger. And if you need to do it again, like now, do that, and then that's it. Do that, do this, do that. Okay, finally, we're coming up to the last electricity death, so as soon, you can see it straight in front of us, so as soon as we crawl through, like the Greek Scotsman we are, go straight into Lekki, and then we'll get the achievement, not so good with Lekki, and that should be seven out of seven all different types of e Lekki d and e. So that is Jobesh done. Diddle diddle doo. Right, so again, we will have to start just from this area again, so we will have to go for another little swim, following the yellow cables around. Now this might be worth just having a little sprint. Again, the slow it, the swimming is ridiculously slow, so it might be just be worth having a uh, thirty se like a twenty thirty second sprint or so, providing you haven't used much of it. And then once again, we're going to climb up. We're going to have to do another running sprint jump and catch of life. Ready, steady, new. Oh, yes. Congratulations on your sweep come. You've done it. Top sweep coming, boys and girls. Top sweep comings. Right, climb, climb, climb. So, you are going to have to run and sprint again, but you will fail this no matter what. No matter what you decide to do, you will always fail. You go pretty far down in the water, so our next job is, uh, well, let's continue swimming up. So basically just keep swimming up until you hit the surface and you go, oh, 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 or whatever noise it is that you, you know, almost drown and you don't drown. 
Uh, yeah, I've, I've never done it, so I don't know the noise. But do you know what I mean? Keep swimming up until you get some air in your lungs. Well, I suppose there's actually nothing better than that, although there is. It's when you've held in a big old poop all day, and then you don't want to go in public, and you don't really want anyone, you know, having the old snifter or saying, Oh my God, some, someone's pooping in there. You hold it in all day, hurts very much, and you get in and you absolutely destroy your own toilet. There is literally, I don't care what you say, there is no better, no better feeling than when you've almost pooped your pants and you get on that toilet. It's, uh, it's... Too much information, I know, but yeah. Anyway, so back to the real stuff now. Back to the game. So we will. Uh, where are we at? Two twelve. Yes. So we will get the treading water achievement, and after we uh, warm up once again our fingers, we are also going to get the next optional phone call, which will be seven out of eight. That's kind of be real. Come on, guys. Come on, keep it together. Fuck sake. So the phone is on the right, but we're going to ignore that for now, uh, because we're just going to head straight in. We're going to have to screwdriver our way in, obviously. So nip, this, nip your way in. Now what you need to do is just go forward a little bit, uh, sort of more, sort of edging towards the poster here on the, just past the poster there on the left-hand side. Then the phone should start ringing. So then you can go behind you and look back. If it doesn't ring, just go forward a little bit more past the poster. And then it should eventually ring at some point. But that is optional phone call number seven. So, again, I know we are, again, in the final home stretch, but we do still have a few chases left. So head to the right and the right again into what used to be, I believe, the crew lounge. And we'll just take a left. Oh, Jesus, mate. All right. Go through the bathroom here. We're going to find a, another body in just a minute. We haven't found one for a while, but it's going to be... Uh, it, basically, they're going to count as number 10 and number 11. Uh, for some reason, I got <laughs> totally stupidly lost, even though, yeah, you just have to look up. There we go, look up, and then we could go through the door on the left. And, oh... Well, that's unfortunate for the bag of uh, dreams there. Oh, no. So there we go. So if you just look at that body um, right there or just get sort of close to it, that counts then as bodies 10 and 11. And then body number 12. There we go. If you just get forward a little bit there, that, again, if you check out the body count um, uh, achievement tracker, that's what you should be on, 52%. So that's what you should be on by now. Hopefully you are on the same. So we'll just nip through the vent that we came through. Go to the right and here is another body. So that is uh, body count 10 and 11. So we'll just head up the street cam, which is not the ladder. Right, when we get onto the top of here, wait for the monster to go past first. There he goes. And then we can just drop straight down as soon as he's gone. And head for the blue light door. This is going to be body count number 12. And that is... Uh, well, that is what I call sweep cum, bro. That is some incredibly bad sweep cum. Uh, yeah. And look at that. He's got his old wiener intestine out as well. Jeez, but he's holding it like it's his prized possession. I mean, I would, yeah, I suppose you would if you decided to get ripped out from the insides. But anyway, we're going to climb up, up into the street come, and we're going to get another body count now. So head to the sort of left, more or less. Go for the old Willy Grease Scotsman trying to chase Santa's little helper. And we are going for body count 13 as soon as we're able to drop down. In fact, it's only 
one. Yes, it's only one that counts. So if we interact with the guy on the left here, this is the only one that counts. And that is, as I said, body count number 13 out of 19. So now we can just head out of the door. Yep. And we'll quietly follow the monster when he nips off. Uh, the old King Charles head. But then we can nip into the right-hand side room. And go back through the vent. Or straight through the vent. And then when we do get through the vent, we'll take a left. And this is another one for the body count. So this will be body count number 14 out of 19. And then once again, we will... Oh, well... I mean, we can eventually climb up. Come on, man. What the... Yo. Well, okay. F climb onto the laundry basket first, then. That's fine. And then climb up. Okay. So, monster's going to chase us. Uh, it's a very short one. You don't have to sprint here. So, just continue going forward. There's no other way to go. Man, the monster's a bit of a slow douchebag, isn't he? So, take a right. And then eventually, we will just drop down, which will give us body count number 15 out of 19. Luckily, it's not our own body. And that, my friends, is what we call a seriously unfortunate broski. That's uh, the old Britney, Britney, Wouch, Britney Spears look from South Park, isn't it? With a shotgun in her head. You know, that whole thing. Anyway, nip it out the door. We're going to go to the right, into not into 120, but into the next room. This is another one of the cabins. And then we will go through the vent into the next one, and because we visited all cabins in the game, you should now get the Snoop achievement. There we go, so that's the Snoop achievement. Visit every Antibroid cabin in the game, which means there's only like six or seven, and the most we got in the at the very start of the game. Uh, you can pick up Roy's insulin as well, but more importantly, we're going to grab another missable achievement here. So turn around, crouch down, interact with the chair, look at the spoon, and that'll be me and my spoon in my bucket. Oh, yeah. Etc, etc. So, uh, there we go. So two achievements and Roy's insulin done right there. So then, what we'll do now is head through the vent once more, through the right-hand side vent, the place that we haven't been. We're going for another body count now as well. Um, because the monster's actually going to catch us, but it's more... It's just a shortcut scene. Then we can just make our way up to the roof. Uh, but this actually, again, does count as body count 16... Plus, when we get up, we'll get uh, get up to the roof. We'll get the Beaufort 11 achievement as well. Oh, this fucking place. God almighty. All right, once we have admired the view and we're still crapping our pants, we're going to head into the building here on the left to find Roy. This is basically an automatic body count, so that's going to be number 17 out of 19. Uh, so sorry about that, Roy. That's an unfortunate way to go, but uh, hey, well, at least you're, I don't know, cooking in heaven or something. Okay, so uh, once you get close to the door, the phone will ring. This is not a, another optional phone call. We'll be getting that last one in about 10 minutes. This one is mandatory, so we do have to interact with it in order to progress anyway. So uh, we can head at the left-hand side door of where the phone is now.
now, partner. That's some pretty awesome uh, platforming skills you got there. Um, so, yes, so for, anyway, <laughs> for the next bit, now this, the next platform in front of us does move, so it might be worth just waiting for it to swing to the right, back to the left, and then do your momentous sprint jump. Oh, for fuck's sake! Okay, so this is effectively now the sort of um, last of the puzzles of the game. It's been quite kind of puzzle light ish, but these are the last ones that we got to do then. So don't walk straight into the poison bra like I just did there, stupidly. We got to interact with the telephone or tog the phone. Tog it. Again, you can uh, just skip most of the cutscenes here with B, as always. So we need to go into the right-hand side room, and what you're going to see directly in front of us now is the ballast operations, but it's locked. So you need to go back to the phone, who will tell you that there is a key in the man of the dead man monster's hands. It's locked. Oh, Aye, there's a key. So let's do that then. So carefully sneak over. I mean, he can't see you or anything like that, but, uh, you know, you just don't want to get smashed up too many times and die a vulnerable death not when we're so close to the end so head back out into the computer room and now we can open up the the blast operations you use for authorized personnel only so open it up and of course we're going to switch the lever on or push it up even i get the operation mode going and chuck some lights on too so back to the phone Switch is it, manual. What's next? And now it's time to get finally the good with the lecky achievement. So, uh, what we need to do is go past the ballast operations. You can see four screens in front of us now. Three are green, the second one is red. So, simply interact with the red one and hold it down. So, hold down the X button. Uh, because you switched on a screen and got this working again, you will get, as I said, the good with the lecky achievement. There it is. So there's only four things in the entirety of the game. And it's one at the basically at the very end. So nice. Right, so head back now. Interact with the phone again. And I don't think you can actually skip this scene. So this goes on for a minute or two. Come on. Come on. Come on, what? Fucking aye! See, not the hopeless after all, eh? Oh, thank Christ, finally. What now? Brody's got a plan. Meet us in drill locks as soon as you can. Okay, I'll meet you there. We're going to be all right, Cass. Yeah, I fucking hope so. Right, so once we have balanced out the D, hey, we're going to go to the right. Remember to hold the X button, or spam the X button, sorry, in order to chop that boy off. We ain't going to need that. Uh, but when we get into this room, we can now head to the left and get out of the door as well on our left. And then just once again, continuing the way round. Alright, unfortunately we do have a little bit more swimming as we head to the right. A whole bunch of water is going to pierce us. Uh, now what we need to do is, the way that we end up going, we need to just keep swimming forward until you see a blue light in front of us. Now that blue light reflects an air pocket. So every time you see that blue light, keep swimming towards it and then head up for a little bit of air. And then just keep going until you're out and trout in. Ha 
and it turns out it was actually the wrong bit. Um, that was just an easier part. Um, providing I don't drown myself right there. Uh, yes, so that wasn't the part that I was on about. But it will be coming soon. Um, because we are going to start getting... Ah! Press the X button. if the, Keep spamming the X button if that happens. Sometimes you might get away with it. Other times you might not. Um, so we can head straight through the door in front of us. And now it's going to start getting just a little bit nippy. Water will be rising, so just keep climbing up the stairs. And this is actually the uh, following, finding the blue light in front of us and grabbing the air pocket. So yeah. <laughs> So I got a little bit ahead of myself, obviously. Uh, so as soon as you see the blue light then, you might think you have enough time, but honestly, you don't. So as soon as you see the flashing blue light, stick your head up, grab a bit of air, and then go to the next one, and then the next one. Oh, please let that be the last of the swimming. I hate swimming. But what we do like is getting the eighth optional phone call. It's right on the uh, side of the office, on the right-hand side, just by the desk. There it is. So once you interact with that and then hang up the phone, that should finally get you the clear down achievement for interacting with all eight optional phone calls. So that is Tidy Boys. Right. Come on. There it is. God, the paranoia you get when the achievements don't unlock straight away. Don't troll me, boy. Don't troll me. I do hope that you have saved up your sprint seconds because this part, it's only a very little chase, but we have to sprint. So as soon as we get here, make a sprint for it and don't even look back. Um, I tried just, I tried not sprinting and it just didn't seem to work. I completely died straight away. So sprint until we get to the very, very end here. Whoa. 
Once we get free, he's going to try and grab us with the tentacle. We're going to spam the X button now. That'll get him gone. And that will actually then... That should actually kill him off. Which will give us... Um, uh, this actually does give us body count 18 out of 19. Plus the drowning of Davy Rennick achievement. So that is... Uh, that's unfortunate for you. All we got to do is just drown him. <laughs> well, who knew? Jesus. Oh, Jesus, that was... Fuck. Rest in peace, you cunt. Christ. I've got to get the fuck out of here. She's freaked out here. Listen, Cass. There's no man. Brody. Ah, fuck me. How does this happen? What about there now, Finlay? Doesn't it fucking matter? If he's dead and you don't think that matters. He was always gonna die. Boy, them. Always. We see that. We've been fucking about with the lakey and pontoons and we thought, I won't mail. What's new our pals turn into monsters? Never once, never fucking once, have we tried to do what needed to be done. Calm down, alright, what do you mean? I mean, I'm ending this. Fucking... So, Finley's had enough. She is wanting to just basically smash the whole oil rig down, which... I mean, I don't blame it, to be honest. Seems like there's only you two left. Uh, but all you got to do is basically follow her. There's not a lot else to do for the moment, apart from go down the linear path and follow where she's going. You can you can see her start darting off. As soon as you turn the corner, you can see her, like, darting off in uh, random corners. Now, if you have been following along, uh, following along with the guide as we go up past the container that just moved, Finley will be crushed. You silly, silly little... Ah, uh, you stink, bruh. Uh, but anyway, after the debris smashes down and we don't get caught in it, Finley will die. And this will be the final one so the, uh, of body count. So the body count achievement should now finally unlock... As soon, well, as soon as we interact with and skip the cutscene, of course. Hey, hey. Hey. There we go. So hopefully you followed along and the body count achievement will unlock you there. That's going to be rare for a nice while, I think. Delicious. Right, so what we are got to do is just basically head forward. And we are going to enter the Derrick. Now, I can't tell you how awkward that is because I have an already gay cousin called Derrick. Um... 
And especially, you know, two things there that I'm not, or I am, I'm not gay. I'm sorry to any uh, any of the gays who fancy me, uh, but I'll try anything four times. Um, and of course, Derek is my cousin, so I don't really want to enter Derek if that's okay. I'll, we'll we'll just uh, hmm, yeah, that's I'll leave that to uh, leave that to his man husband, of course. Anyway, since I'm not going to enter Derek uh, only in the game, we are just going to head forward, and then all you got to do is basically. Use your lighter, and we've just got one more scene left to go, and that is that. Christ! That chance. So once we've done this then, all you got to do, it's another scene that's probably going to take about another minute or two, but all you got to do for the next part is just walk forward. Walk into the light. Walk into the light, since, you know, we've basically just um, exploded ourselves. So, again, these endings are not always my favourite in games. I hate when the main protagonist or whatever has to go through so much just to die at the end anyway. Genuinely pees me off, that does. But anyway... Once you have walked all the way to the light, it's basically a whole bunch of stories about how uh, Kaz and Susie met and everything like that, and where they were before he left. Uh, we're just going to keep swimming towards towards the light. Always going to be here for this wind. And we will wake up in our humble home. What? Was that just all a dream? Was it all a dream? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Who's it? Oh, no. Please don't be Derek. Please don't be Derek. Please don't be Derek. Don't, don't be Derek. Don't be Derek. Oh, thank God. It's just Suze. Oh, man. I thought there was something else going on. But anyway, once we head outside, there is going to be another bit of a long conversation. And that is basically going to be the end of the game. So... Uh, you will unlock the Still Wakes the Deep achievement for completing it. The Beiran Kuan, you know, the one for the Scottish garlic. And the uh, providing you didn't sprint for more than 10 minutes, you should unlock the Walking Simulator achievement as well. So thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I really, really hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did. Absolutely loved it. And thank you for watching. I hope the guide helped. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. A big shout out as always to my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and everyone who interact with me on the daily. So thank you so much again guys and gals and I will see you in the next Game Pass game. Big old rare achievement. Bear a quarter, a quarter, a fine, a Scottish garlic. Love. Mm-mm.